I've done this on OSB, which is really cheap right now, by the way. If you're gonna make your panels, you can make them out of OSB, which is that chipboard plywood, you know? I think it's just sought for $4.50 a sheet in Menards. Could go with that, um, but when, you'll see when we do that technique, if you're gonna do it, do it on the smooth side, because they should have a smooth and a rough side. Don't do it on the rough side. And I did it on the rough side, so it's really hard, because you'll see why. Um, so you're gonna start with your panel. You can paint it white first. I'm not gonna do it here, because it turns out when I did my samples, it turned out okay. Um, so you're gonna need white paint and black paint to start. And I'm sure you guys don't have any white or black paint around, so let's go buy some. Uh, I'm gonna laugh at my jokes. Feel so yeah, free not to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, the technique we're going to use is called a scumble, which is exactly what it sounds like, which is where you just kind of, you're going to kind of just play around two things and make a mess. But, let's think about what we're going to do first. We're trying to replicate siding. So, siding's about hmm, six inches, you know, wide. So, this scumble is more a linear scumble because the, the siding is going that way. A real scumble is just a big mess of paint just to go all over the place. But there's a technique, and you'll see why I'm talking about this. There's going to be somewhere where we want the darks more to be than not. So you're going to be taking your, both your colors and just kind of scumbling. Just and use two two different brushes because and do this not in the sun. I was painting my samples yesterday out in the sun and it was drying really fast. And you need this paint to be able to kind of and you know what? Don't use really high quality paint. This is like bare paint from you know when I painted my house. And it's really really thick because it's supposed to cover really well. Well, it's too thick for this job. It needs to be a little thin because you're going to be now just kind of messing it up. And you just kind of keep going back and forth. With your white and your black, you just kind of. And you want to try and not have areas of white, white and areas of black, black. Because uh, the way Nick taught the class, um, he never. He never uses a colored paint for the color of the house because he likes to do his coloring with his lights, which made sense to me. It's the same way if any of you have ever seen um, the famous home haunt uh, terror syndicate. He uses no color at all. Every, every, all his props are black and white, uh, and he then then he uh, uses all his coloring with his lights. Uh, so he's never disappointed with his detailing job. And black and white just looks good. So, so I hope you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. I don't want to bore you too much because I've got one of these already done. So I could just flip to that. But, um, I'm trying to fill my hour. I want to make sure you, you know, get your money's worth. But Dustin, you're going to charge for admission. Oh, then you're going to get your money's worth. <laughs> okay. So, just keep doing this. And <laughs> my facade had like 10 panels. So I got really good at this after a while. Um, so the first one you're like, oh, I don't know how to do this, what am I doing? And then after five minutes you go, oh, I'm just kind of playing paint on a wall. All right, I can do that. So you want your grays and your blacks and everything kind of run together. No, no definite patches of color because we're going to put that in afterwards. So I hope that gives you an idea of what we're doing because I'm bored already. Okay. So you let that dry. <coughs> you get something kind of like maybe that. But it would be larger. It would be the whole panel. Now here's why I said you gotta want your lights and your darks kind of in certain areas because next we're gonna put in 
I'm not seeing the happy little fuck right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I happy little He's not seeing the happy little sunset in there. Oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> I have the tree. You should have said tree, I would have got it. Um, let me go. Oh, here we go. So then your next tool is either one of these Those or awesome. just three inch chip brush because this you can get a really nice precise edge with these. Because what you got to paint in now is your lines for your siding, where the where you know where the siding ends. So and let, and don't forget, if you get to the edge of a house, the siding just doesn't go off into nowhere. There's the trim board. Now that does. Oh, you now have to contribute to the muddiness of the water. So, oh, and to make this a lot easier on yourself, because I, you know, most people don't have very good leveling skills when I just put paint on this. Your chalk line out. Use blue chalk, because it's already blue, it's already dark. Don't use orange or red or whatever, because it's going to show up in your, in your final job, probably. Oh, yeah. And then just. You know, snap your piece of line so that when you do this next step, you're doing straight lines. Uh, so much. Get a helper and so it's easier. You can make them level and all that. Probably not very level. But anyway, that way you can keep your Side lines pretty straight. Because I mean, you might want to let your house look creepy, but how do you want it to do that? I don't know. It's not really creepy. <laughs> it looks like bad craftsmanship. You just kind of. Yeah. And this is where that foam wheel works pretty well, too. You could just wheel it. And if you're doing 20 panels, yeah, you'll run a lot. And, um, so, like I was saying, when on the dryer talk class, he did the color of his house white. I did green. I just thought, oh. I had this weird image in my head from an old Scooby Doo cartoon in the Haunted House of Green. I'm going to make mine green. Because I knew I was going to use white light, so I didn't want it to, I wanted it to be a color. So here is. The creepy old house, super duper technique. You, need, you, you do need a kind of a specialized piece of equipment for this step to make it work. It's this. It's a scrap of wood. And so, the way this works is, take some of your white paint and just flop it on there any way you want. Get a fair amount on there because you're going to need it. And then just get to your surface and then just kind of go. And you get that, you know, most of the paint chipped away and it's all that gray, nasty stuff underneath. And you can just keep, if you don't like, if you want more, obviously just add more until you get the coverage of paint that you want. And like I said, I did mine green. I think my pictures are floating around out there somewhere. I did green. And between, every time you do this, you don't want to leave all the paint on there. So every once in a while, I'll just kind of wipe this off. And then just add, you know, put the paint in a different spot and add a different shape, and you'll get a different 